This video is about the concept of combining complementary indicators. Hello, I'm Peter Martin with Trading212 and I thought I'd provide an introduction about the idea of using two indicators in order to provide complementary information about what's going on in the market. Now there may be occasions where you don't want to rely on just a single indicator in isolation and you want to use a second indicator as a backup to uh, confirm what the first one is saying or just provide you with an alternative view about what's going on. Now when you do this you want to to ensure that they're not just telling you the same information twice. So you want to avoid using the same type of indicator. For example, you don't want to use two trend following tools. So you wouldn't want to use a moving average in conjunction with the average directional index, the ADX, because they're both trend following tools and they're both really just going to be saying the same thing. And uh, similarly, you wouldn't want to use two oscillators because oscillators really just tell you the same thing about price momentum. So what we want to do is to combine two complementary indicators. Now what do we mean by that? Well two different types. So uh, an example of this would be a combination of an oscillator with a trend following tool or a trend following tool with a volatility indicator or a volatility indicator with an oscillator. So let's now take a look at Trading212's web app and we'll look at a few ideas about how we might do this. So here we have a daily chart of the German 30 index, the DAX, and at the bottom of the screen I have got three momentum oscillators added. We've got the slow stochastic oscillator, the relative strength index, the RSI, and the momentum indicator. And if we look at how they move, they move very much in line with each other. Um, and so they are basically telling us the same thing. Now, I don't want to be too dogmatic about this. It doesn't mean that there aren't ways to look at uh, different oscillators and, uh, and gather information. You could, for example, look at oscillators on different time frames and combine them that way. But I just want to really illustrate the concept that we want to be wary about looking at two indicators that are basically telling us the same message twice over, which is not really any different than just looking at one. And it kind of defeats the purpose of trying to combine two. So let's get rid of the bottom two here, the momentum indicator and the relative strength index. And we'll just leave the slow stochastic oscillator there. Now on the main price chart, I have got a trend following tool added. I have two um, moving averages added. So let's just right click and look at manage objects indicators to see what they are. Well, we've got a 10 day exponential moving average and a 100 day exponential moving average. If we click on this one, we can see that it is the blue line is the faster, the quick, more responsive exponential moving average. And the idea here is that we will get our trading signal from that line crossing over the longer moving average. And I want to concentrate on this part here. We've got this bearish signal from the faster one crossing under the longer moving average. And we can see that after that, we've got it. Well, we have a nice downward slope to both of these moving averages, which is uh, bearish. And if we look at what the uh, st slow stochastic oscillator has been telling us, well, we can see that there's a kind of bearish move in the momentum as well. So that's agreeing with us at this stage. And so that could help bolster our decision. But really the, what I also want to look at is once we've opened this position, how we could perhaps use the slow stochastic oscillator as a way of helping us to time some exits. So we've gone short at this position here and we can follow the slow stochastic and see that it moves into oversold territory. And then we get the, the two lines, the percentage K and percentage D, this crossover of the percentage K above uh, percentage D could be a, a signal you could use to as a buy signal or to just part close some of your position. Or maybe you'd want to look a bit later on where they both cross out of the uh, oversold territory. But either way, you could use either of those as uh, an area to um, take some partial profit on that sell at this level. And then if we continue on, we get another situation here where we could do the same. And that would give us a buy here to uh, close out some more partial profit. And then when we get to this point here, we can see we've still got this bearish conditions on uh, from our moving averages. We've still got a downward slope on the long term moving average and our shorter one is still well below it. But we can see that we've gone into overbought territory and then um, we could either add to our position either with this signal or the 
percentage K crossing under the percentage D or when they both exit out of the overbought region. And that could be adding onto position. And once again, you get another signal here where we are taking some partial profit. So that's just an idea for how you might be able to combine um, so a trend following tool, the moving average with uh, an oscillator, which in this case was the slow stochastic oscillator. Now let's move on to another idea we could look at. And this is a chart of the UK uh, 100, the FTSE index. And this is on a four hour chart. This one, once again, we're using the slow stochastic oscillator. It's just with the default settings as it was in the previous chart. And what I have added on the main chart, if we right click and look at manage objects, we can see that it is Bollinger Bands. And Bollinger Bands are a volatility tool. So this is an example of using a volatility indicator in conjunction with a momentum oscillator. Now, one use of Bollinger Bands is to identify what is called a volatility squeeze. This is where we have uh, a narrowing of these Bollinger Bands. Now, the wider the Bollinger Bands, the greater the volatility, the narrower, the lower the volatility. And the idea is that when we see a volatility squeeze, when we see the bands narrowing a great deal, that it can often presage a sharp move. Now, Bollinger Bands don't tell you anything about the direction of that move. So what we're gonna use in this case is um, a slow stochastic to try and inform us about, or use it to help us get an idea about what the direction might be. So if we look at this, Point. This is where it really narrows in here. If we look at what the slow stochastic does around that time, well, we can see we're down here and we see this sharp pickup in uh, upward or bullish momentum there um, during that volatility squeeze and the stochastic switches from low almost oversold territory very quickly rising crossing that 50 threshold so it's giving quite a bullish signal there now it's got there well ahead of price which of course is what the stochastic indicator is designed to do and then we see that we get this big pickup in price subsequently after basically for giving us a movement in price that agrees with what our indicators were saying to us and we can see we've got something similar going on here where we get a narrowing of the Bollinger Bands. It's not quite as pronounced as it was back here, but then they widen up again and we do get this big move in price and our, our momentum indicator has moved from over uh, bought territory and dropped rapidly showing us a big drop in, well, a bearish momentum is being indicated and it crosses through that 50 threshold so we've got a bearish directional signal from the slow stochastic there and that agrees with what we see subsequently in price. So those are just a few quick examples to illustrate the general idea of how you can combine complementary indicators using Trading 212's web app but don't forget you can download for free native mobile apps for iOS and Android so that Trading 212 is available across all your devices and always at your fingertips. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button and give us a like. Or if you've got any feedback or suggestions for future topics that you'd like to see us cover, why not send us a message in the comments section? We do read through every message that comes in there. Now, as well as doing these educational videos about trading, we also do analysis of popular markets, including crude oil and gold and euro versus the US dollar. And the best way to access all our video content is to click on the subscribe button and subscribe to Trading 212's YouTube channel. We put out new videos on a regular basis. If you click on the alarm bell icon, then you'll get a notification the next time we upload a new video. But that's all for this time from me, Peter Martin and Trading 212. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.